The Toronto Blue Jays have signed another fireballer. Junior Fernandez was claimed off waivers from the Yankees and has a chance to make an impact with the big league club in 2023. We also got a Carlos Correa update amid his weird situation with the Mets. And finally, Brian Reynolds' rumors are intensifying, so you won't want to miss this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. A lot to get into today, but first I want to give a shout-out to Team Canada for winning the World Junior Championship. And a shout-out to Damar Hamlin as well, who's doing a lot better and uh, he's starting to communicate with his teammates and his family. So uh, good for him and glad to see that. But we want to thank you all for the support that we've been getting. It's been unreal. And the New Year's just uh, started off on the right note, just as we expected. So thanks again. Yeah, support's been unbelievable. And like you said, shout-out to uh, Team Canada and Hamlin He uh, for hopefully pulling through. It's looking very good. But let's get in, let's get into the first topic today. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy the daily Jays content. We have a lot more coming for you this offseason. But let's get into the first uh, topic, which is Blue Jays signed Fireballer. They signed another one. I know we signed one a few days ago. This guy, uh, he doesn't throw quite as hard, but we have tons of screenshots to show you for him. So I'll just get into the first one. This is the original. Uh, the Blue Jays have claimed um, reliever Junior Fernandez from the Yankees. He joins a fringe bullpen depth group that is finally leaning more towards velocity and upside eventually one will hit i have a lot more <laughs> screenshots to show you but peter what are your initial thoughts on uh on that first of all shout out to keegan matheson really yeah. good blue jays reporter i love i love the work that he does whether it be on twitter or on his website over there uh but yeah he's right i mean uh, not to be confused with julian fernandez who the jays signed not too long ago uh, i actually thought they were brothers at first they look uh <laughs> They look pretty similar. I, I don't know why I thought that. But yeah, Junior Fernandez, I remember he started a game against the Toronto Blue Jays where he came in relief and uh, George Springer hit a grand slam off him. So that's <laughs> that's what I remember Junior Fernandez from. But he does throw hard. That pitch that Springer drove out to deep uh, left center was 99. It was down the middle. But uh, if he can find his control and really hone in his secondary pitches, and just like Julian Fernandez, he's got a chance to make an impact at the big league level. Yeah, and he also, uh, I think I might have a clip of him, I'm not 100% sure, but he also struck out Vladdy with, uh, I believe, a fastball or a sinker as well. That was going around Twitter, but there you go. I'll pop up a few screenshots. <laughs> a lot of people had things to say. This is from Thomas Hall, another Jays writer. He said, for those asking about Julian or Junior Fernandez's four-seamer, it grades extremely well and is easily his best weapon, but he only threw it 12.6% of the time in 2022, which is super strange. And then there was another, uh, this is from another guy on Twitter saying he's just 25 years old, averaged 98.8 miles an hour in 2022, and didn't give up a single hit off of it. He'd be best served to ditch his sinker and be a primary fastball slider changeup. Another very interesting lottery ticket bullpen arm that throws gas. And before we uh, get in further, I'll show you guys a few clips of what he has to work with here in case you haven't seen it. So obviously, 101 mile per hour uh, fastball there from him. And then we also have this here, another fastball. And then we have, yeah. of course, his, uh, this one's, uh, I think this one might be a slider or a changeup. But either way, he has a lot of good tools. It's just he has to put them together. And uh, an interesting topic that I don't know if I have a screenshot for, but the Blue Jays' bullpen is full. And if he wants to make the team, we can't send him down. So he just needs to be in the bullpen. Yeah, exactly. And uh, another thing that you see a lot with the Toronto Blue Jays is that they're very analytics-driven in their pitching they uh, they want you to throw your best pitches as much as possible. And I'll use Kevin Gosman as an example. Uh, he started throwing his slider a lot less and his splitter a lot more in San Francisco. Uh, and once he got to Toronto, that elevated even more. His main problem with uh, the Baltimore Orioles was that they didn't want him throwing splitters. They wanted him throwing his slider for strikes to use it as a strikeout pitch. And that's why he was getting hit hard. I mean, he's a bit of a late bloomer. He started to figure it out once he was 29 years old in San Francisco. And that trend has continued as he got to Toronto. So uh, I have confidence in Pete Walker and just the pitching staff in general uh, that they can really hone in on what's working for them and what's not working for them and then really use that to their advantage. If your best pitch is your fastball and you're throwing it 12% of the time. That's just not good enough, you know, and someone's got to tell him someone's got to be in his ear that, Hey, you got to throw this pitch some more. And maybe the teams that he was with uh, just didn't really feel invested in his development or, or didn't feel like taking him on as a project. So the blue Jays seem to want to do that. And, 
and want to hone in his uh, his best pitches. Yeah, and he, like I said earlier, he's out of options, so clearly they see something in him, or they're just, you know, a lot of people. They cannot send him down, so I don't know. They're changing their uh, mentality, a lot more fireballs, a couple more screenshots before we move on to the next topic. As recent as 2019, he posted a 1.52 ERA and 65 innings pitch across three levels of the minor league, and he's just 25 years old, so of course that bodes well. And then finally, his baseball savant. It doesn't have the uh, a lot of the advanced stuff, but... You can see 98th percentile velocity with uh, 99 average mile per hour in the fastball. And his changeup is 91, so he throws absolute gas. It'll be interesting to see what the Jays do with him. And maybe he breaks camp with the team and hopefully, you know, I guess could do well in the bullpen going forward. But we'll see what happens on that. And let's move into the next topic now, which is a uh, kind of pertains to the Blue Jays in the sense of it's a huge, huge player. And uh, so I'll pop up a screenshot here now. Obviously, you guys, I'm sure you guys have heard about the news. From the Mets, from the Giants, even hopping around. But Carlos Correa update from Jim Bowden. The Twins are back in. There's a possibility that the Minnesota Twins come in and pick Correa out from under the Mets' noses. Now, we do have another update, which I'll show you in a second. But what are your thoughts on the Twins maybe being back in there as a potential suitor? This whole situation is so weird, Nick. Like, I, I don't even know what to make of it anymore. He was he was a San Francisco Giant for one week. Then he was with the with the Mets, who then backed out and are, are trying to renegotiate his contract. And now the Twins are back in, the team that we thought had no chance to get him back. So it, it's just super weird. And it pertains to the Blue Jays in a sense that, I mean, the Mets are a World Series contender and the Blue Jays hope to be there. And if you take one of those key pieces away from the Mets, then it bodes well for the Blue Jays come October. I don't think they're in on Carlos Correa. It's a lot of money. In a lot of term, which the Blue Jays have never necessarily been a fan of. They never done anything to that magnitude, a 10 plus year contract. So I wouldn't hold a, my breath if I was a Blue Jays fan hoping for Carlos Correa. But man, it's it's just so weird. Like, is he gonna get eight years now? Is he gonna get like a bridge deal and try to hit free agency to show that he's healthy again? I, I just don't know what to make of it, Nick. It's it's making my head spin around and I wish he was a Blue Jay, but it's a massive headache at this point. Like, do you even want to take this on? That's a great question. And uh, I'll uh, kind of alluded to it. The Mets seeming like they do not want to take it on as they are very frustrated with the Carlos Correa talks. They're now considering walking away. And the Twins, obviously, if they swoop them back up, um, you know, very interesting, I guess. it. Uh, I don't know. And the Jays, I think, are more focused on, I'm sure, extending their core rather than going for a yeah. player like Correa at this time. But uh, two teams now have walked away, so maybe the Twins take him on the same deal as last year until he gets his medical sorted, but I don't know. The Jays play the Twins a fair bit, so if he goes back to the Twins, uh, I don't know, but the Twins aren't a World Series contender, really, so I guess yeah, they no, kinda, they're not both ways, not. yeah. But what do you think, uh, I'll ask you this, where do you think the, the talks fell apart? Like, is it the years? Is it the money? Like, is is the injury really that bad that they're bringing up something that happened before he even got to the major leagues, something that's never even bothered him up until this point? I, I just don't understand. what What's the deal there? What do you think? Nick? I think maybe, I don't know, maybe they thought it wasn't going to be as big of a deal, and then they saw the same thing the Giants seen, and then Correa just doesn't want to move on the term at all. That's the only thing I can think of, because you think so if, weird. you think Cohen would do a short-term, high AAV deal if that's what he's getting from twins but i don't know it's very interesting and let us know what your comments or in the comments what your thoughts are on that and i don't know we'll move on to something again which is also very jays related and you guys have heard his name a lot which is a brian reynolds trade update now, obviously with dalton our show you know some people are saying we're still in on brian reynolds and that's still debated but uh i'll pop up a screenshot here this is from john Heyman. he basically said pirate star brian reynolds wants a trade and teams including the yankees want him which is a bit scary as a jays fan but the pirates want to keep him and offered a franchise record deal in here is their offer, and I'll show you guys that right now, which is uh, quite funny. But well, sources say the Pirates oh, offered man. over seventy-five million for six years with no team options. Reynolds Camp originally mentioned that the one hundred sixty-eight million eight-year deal that Matt Olson received uh, was something that they wanted. The Braves did sign Sean Murphy, and Murphy's in the same class as Olson. The Reynolds Camp would counter that that the deal is low and is absolutely low. I think any team in the MLB would would give Reynolds six years for seventy-five million. Six years for a hundred million, any team would do that. So. I guess as it pertains to the Jays, what do you think? I guess what are your thoughts are on that, and maybe the Yankees being a potential uh, suitor there, which is a little scary. This is it, it, this whole situation is such a joke. The Pirates, oh yeah, we don't want to trade you. We we'll do whatever we can to keep you. Here's six years of uh, seventy five million. Here's less money and and one more year than uh, Andrew Benintendi just got from the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense for a guy who had six wins above replacement in uh, in 2021. It's just 
it's ridiculous. The Pirates uh, are making a mockery out of this Brian Reynolds situation. I hope he doesn't go to the Yankees. That would be, that would I think that would put them over the top, and that would make them the favorite in the American League. Uh, they just got Carlos Rodon. You add Brian Reynolds to the mix, it keeps Aaron Judge in right field. He doesn't have to shift over to center every now and then. It makes him a much better ball club. So this whole situation, it, it's just another, it's just another thing that it's like, wow, what? what the hell's going on here? And, and you look at it and I don't even know who's the best suited to make a Brian Reynolds trade, uh, considering the pirates want so much for him and won't even offer him $15 million a year. That's, that's also crazy to me. Hopefully not the Yankees. Cause that could have a major, uh, major impact on us. And I saw a tweet yeah. from, I think you said Josh Goldberg. I saw the same thing. He basically said that they're happy that they went with the blue Jays. That is are happy. They traded for, uh, for a show rather than Reynolds and the fans are, you know, happy about that as well, which I don't know. I kind of agree though. Reynolds, obviously, I don't know. It's very weird. It seems like the Reynolds situation uh, is very interesting. And the vault Dalton Ver show is pretty straightforward. We got our, our left fielder slash well, our center fielder of the future left fielder for next year. So I'm pretty happy that we got Ver show instead of Reynolds, especially for the package that we gave up. Cause it, it would have took more to get Reynolds. I'd like to think, or maybe a similar package, yeah. but either way, I'm happy with that. And do you have any uh, final thoughts for wrap it up? Just uh, just madness, madness in the off season, and I expect it to continue as uh, as the months roll along here and we approach opening day. Yeah, me too. And the Blue Jays seem to be intertwined in all these MLB, uh, even if it's not directly them, they're always related, especially with the Yankees name being brought up in seemingly every move that pops up. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you uh, enjoy the content, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.